Masha Korpacheva is a California-based realtor and a member of the National Association of Realtors in Los Angeles. She's an advocate for selling and buying homes with soul and practicing mindfulness in real estate. With master's degrees in spiritual psychology and linguistics, Masha brings all of her skills to work with her clients. An intuit and empath, she has touched many lives with her outstanding ability to see beyond the visible and helping to come to better understanding of issues and their resolutions. An adventurous world traveler, from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to exploring the Galapagos Islands, Masha has a particular passion for the City of Angels. Having landed in this paradise and adopted it as her home, she's been sharing old Hollywood stories since 2007. This podcast is an invitation to feel and experience the souls of famous old Hollywood homes and to have an in-depth journey to the areas where they're located through interviews with longtime residents. Either you're a fan of old Hollywood in Los Angeles, planning to have a vacation, or an even bigger step, considering a certain area for your future home. This is your opportunity to receive valuable information and insightful advice you won't find anywhere else. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood. Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Are you in the mood for California? Today, we're exploring and feeling a very special chateau in Hollywood that is filled with magic. After that, we're going to meet with a good friend of mine, John Fugelzang, an outstanding comedian and a serious XM radio host. He and I will talk about his experience of living in Hollywood, and we will find out what this place means to him. And now, are you ready to feel the soul of Hollywood Chateau? Open Sesame is a phrase that opens all locked doors when you truly believe in magic. Hollywood is just like this. It reminds you over and over again that all doors are an illusion and that the only entrance you need to seek and open is deep inside your heart. And this is the place where all the adventures begin. There is a very special property in Hollywood which makes all your senses come alive, and you can never be fully prepared for what to expect next, as you may be literally tricked around every corner, as feelings of bewilderment, wonder, and excitement are fighting for your attention. You follow the aroma of dark woods and antiquities, and find yourself ordering an old-fashioned at the bar in the Grand Salon. After the first sip, you are already in a dialogue with a chair painting purchased from William Randolph Hearst's collection, and an alternative reality has never seemed to be so real. You are actually in the middle of what used to be an orange grove inside a private residence of a banker, lawyer, newspaper editor, real estate investor, and philanthropist Roland B. Lane. In 1909, he had it designed by architects Lyman Farwell and Oliver Dennis and constructed as a near duplicate of the Kimberley Crest House and Gardens in Redlands that the architects had designed over a decade earlier. This Gothic Renaissance Chateau, or Holy Chateau, as it was lovingly called by Catherine and Roland Lane for 30 years, was one of the most popular addresses in Hollywood and a welcome location for elite social gatherings. Mrs. Lane worked hard to improve the quality of life in Hollywood through various community service organizations, and to raise funds for her projects, she held numerous elaborate and elegant luncheons, tea parties, and musical events. When the greatest ballerina of all time, Anna Pavlova, visited Hollywood in 1915, to star in a movie The Dumb Girl of Portici, for which she was paid the unheard of sum of $50,000, she is said to have been staying at Holy Chateau. 
we can possibly imagine Charlie Chaplin being invited to one of the dinners with the ballerina as they discussed the conflicting condition, their sensational celebrity status, and the longing for privacy. Yes, be careful with what you wish for. Open sesame always comes with a price to pay. In 1940, Rollin Lane suffered a stroke and died at home. Catherine died five years later. After that, the mansion became a multi-family home, then a home for the elderly, and eventually a collection of small apartments. In 1955, Holy Chateau was sold, and for the next several years, its fate was not certain, as the building fell into complete disrepair. But as predestination would have it, the brothers Milt and Bill Larson convinced then-owner Thomas O. Glover to transform the property into a private club for magicians, as it was their father's dream. Thus, on January 2, 1963, the Magic Castle opened its doors for the first time. Meet Larson recalls. When we started the castle, we thought it should feel a bit like the Adams family or Disney's haunted mansion. The mansion still had the aura of a mystical time, so from there we took advantage of what people thought magic should be and made it all come true. There's nothing quite like it in the world. For everything we know, there is something surprising around the corner. Everyone is entertained by magic whether they want to admit it or not. Some people don't want to admit they've been fooled, but either way, they've enjoyed the moment. The Magic Castle is filled with old Hollywood spirit, and your curiosity carries you through the maze of rooms and parlors while you're slowly imbibing your old-fashioned. After a while, you start experiencing true enchantment with life itself Thinking of all the moments when Open Sesame opened the doors for you when you didn't even know doors existed. And in the Houdini seance room, where Rollin Lane took his last breath, you inhale the everlasting charm of magic that is the biggest treasure you can take with you to share with the rest of the world. And here we are. Welcome to Hollywood. It is such an honor for me to have my favorite comedian and a serious XM radio host, John Fugelzang, here with me. Hello, John. Hello, Masha. I'm so delighted to have you here with me today. So, so delighted. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I know you don't live in Los Angeles anymore, but... I know that you come here often and Los Angeles is missing you and I hope you're missing Los Angeles as well. And I have some questions for you I'd like to ask you about your feelings about this beautiful city. I would love to. You know, I was always a diehard New Yorker and then I moved to California and I, I was living out by the beach for a few years and we liked it. It was fine, but it wasn't until I moved into Hollywood that I fell in love and I became an LA person. And now, even though I've, I've moved back, um, LA is, uh, one of my favorite places in the Hollywood is one of my favorite places in the world. And, um, it was just very, very close to my heart as a snobby New Yorker. Hollywood is what made me love the West coast. Wow. Wow. How interesting. So what did it feel like for you, um, to live in Hollywood? Well, it was really strange. I, I couldn't believe once I moved into Hollywood, we, we lived near Hollywood Boulevard and after spending so much time in our cars, that's always the thing people complain about in LA is always in your car. Once I was in Hollywood Boulevard, um, I was able to walk to the place I was working. I moved there because I was doing a TV show nearby. And suddenly we went from filling up our car twice a week to filling up our car twice a month. And we walked everywhere. Hollywood's a great walking town. And it was really, really good exercise. And we could go to yoga, to movies, go shopping, get groceries, go to my job and never have to get in a car. But what really made me love it was the history. The first night I moved into Hollywood, I wanted to go down to Man's Chinese Theater mm -hmm. and uh, see the footprints. But there was a premiere. Nobody could get in there. And I remember uh, we were listening to a loudspeaker saying, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Mr. Mickey Rourke. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was so hilarious that I thought, oh man, we're in the right town. And the next morning, my wife and I went down to uh, the theater and we, uh, we, we put our, our hands on the Marx Brothers footprints for luck in Hollywood. And that was how we began our, our stay there. And we lived in the city for a couple of years and there's so much history in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard. But I also fell in love with the fact that it's it's very much a city. Every part of LA comes together in Hollywood. You will see wealth, uh, you will see poverty and struggle. Uh, you will see beautiful people, you will see freaks. You will see tourists, and you will see the best of old Hollywood. And for me, that made it the most interesting neighborhood in all of LA County. Yes, it's like loving all facets of humanity. And then you can encounter all of these facets in this one place in Hollywood. As a New Yorker, I really liked that. I liked a place where, you know, beautiful, rich club kids would rub shoulders with uh, tourists who would rub shoulders with um, just people hustling to get by and make it in this business, who would rub shoulders with adults dressed up as superheroes and Jedi Knights. <laughs> Because you see them as well. And I never had a boring day living in the Hollywood area. And then if you were into the history or the beauty, there's just so much. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. Absolutely. So do you ever contemplate moving back to Los Angeles? All the time. My wife and I have spent uh, the last couple of Christmases in L.A. Now that we're parents, we bring our child there all the time. And he loves L.A. He likes the beach more. But if I move back, I would want to live near Hollywood. Definitely. In fact, I'll tell you a secret. Um, we we moved back from L.A. The series I was working on ended and my father was not doing well. So we moved back to the East Coast, but I never gave up my California citizenship. And so to this day, I'm still legally a California resident. Ten years later, I vote in California. Uh, I have my California driver's license. Um, and, uh, you know, my wife became a New York state resident. So my wife's from California and she's a New Yorker. I'm from New York and I'm a Californian. And that's kind of the strange little family I live in right now. I love this. I love this. Give me one second. Sorry, I had a I had a crazy cat. My cat comes from LA as well. <laughs> I do. We wanted another cat and 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 my friend in Venice Beach had some kittens and I was flying out there. So I picked up the kitten and sneaked it on a red eye flight. So I, I live here with an LA cat. Oh my God. LA cats are the best. So yes. you do have a piece of Los Angeles to be there in New York. Yes, I do. You're right. Oh, oh, I love your story. That's beautiful. So you do say that you come to LA for Christmases oh, yeah. with your family and with your son. And what are your favorite activities in Los Angeles that your son likes to? You mentioned he likes the beach, but is there anything else he likes? Oh, of course. I mean, the LA Zoo, the aquarium in Long Beach, um, Disneyland. I was, I've already been to Disneyland twice this year, Masha. Wow. <laughs> My child's a New Yorker, but he's been out there twice. Um, and you know, I like driving around and seeing, uh, you know, old Hollywood homes. When I was a kid on my first trip to LA, my parents took us on a tour and, you know, for me, just seeing where Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward lived and seeing the outside of their house, I got it. Like, I really, really appreciated that and loved it and thought it was magical. And so I still have that feeling, but I, I love to bring my son to uh, the El Capitan Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, which is Disney's movie theater. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of history there. It was, you know, they redid the whole thing in the early 90s. And then the Northridge earthquake totally damaged it three years later. Mm -hmm. So they finally restored it and upgraded it again uh, in like 97. And it's just a palace on the inside. It's a beautiful, magical place to see films. And I, I still get that. I, I still love going to see movies at Man's Chinese Theater or at the Cinerama Dome. Uh, well, when you could still go to the Cinerama Dome. So it's not so much where I take my child, it's where I drag my child because I want to go. He has the best teacher to learn from where <laughs> where to go. <laughs> I think that's important. Like as a New Yorker, I do the same thing. You know, I like to know the history of where I live and I 
every place has a history, but it's really fun to know it. I have family down south, and just this morning, a few hours before you and I sat down to talk, I had uh, my cousin from Virginia was in Greenwich Village, and I was taking her around Greenwich Village saying, oh, that's where Bob Dylan used to live, and he shot that album cover there, and Woody Allen did his first stand-up show in that club, and Eleanor Roosevelt used to live in that building. You know, it's great to be connected to the history of where you're living, but if you're in a place like New York or San Francisco or Chicago or Hollywood... There's so much incredible history there. Yes. That um, it's fun to live there. And it's so much fun to have people visit and tell them about, you know, oh, there's the Houdini mansion. But they're not sure if Houdini ever lived there. You know, there's so many great stories about these homes in L.A. No, no, I agree. Like living in Hollywood almost makes you uh, feel as if you're a part of Hollywood in some way, some strange way. And I, I love Christmas there. I've spent a lot of Christmases in L.A. And my son has spent two there. And it's magical. The Christmas parade is great. In fact, there's a the legend is that yeah, back in the in the 40s, after World War II, they were having the Hollywood Christmas parade, and Gene Autry was riding his horse on Hollywood Boulevard for the parade, and he heard these kids yelling. They were ignoring him, uh, and they were yelling, "Here comes Santa Claus! Here comes Santa Claus!" Ignoring Gene Autry, one of the most famous Western movie stars. But he kept hearing them say, here comes Santa Claus. And it inspired him to go home and write that song. So <laughs> that song came from a big Hollywood movie star being ignored on Hollywood Boulevard. What a great story. I love it. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing, John. Oh, I'm the, listen, I bore my kids with these things all the time. Okay. One more question to you. What is your ideal home? Can you describe it? You know, it's hard to say because I'm someone who believes in, I could tell you all the features of a home that would make it ideal for me. But it's it really is, this is going to sound really cliche for what we're talking about, but it really is, if you will, the soul or the spirit of a home. How does the home speak to you? You know, you can go to, oh, there's the pool I want, there's the light I want, there's the the kind of street I want, the kind of architecture I like. But if the home doesn't speak to your soul, to your spirit, you know what it's like when you go someplace that's perfect, but it just doesn't feel right. Absolutely. And then you know what it's like to go someplace that isn't what you wanted at all, but it's like the universe is telling you, welcome, you're in the right spot. So for me, I have lots of physical checklists for a home, but it really is, and not just the home, but also the street, the neighborhood, the energy, you know, that's what calls me and that's what makes me want to stay in a place. What's your ideal? I'm, I'm curious, you're, you're the real estate goddess. What, what, is, what is, I mean, <laughs> like you see so many gorgeous homes all the time and I, I follow your social media and I see these properties that you're, that you're selling and and it's it's really cool seeing like, you know, oh, I make dreams come true for people. You're good at that. But I'm wondering, what is it? What's the perfect home for you? You know what? Um, the perfect home for me would be the one where I would feel that, you know, I traveled in time and I landed somewhere in 1950s. And the moment I walk in, that this energy, as you exactly as you described it, the energy of the home embraces me. And uh, it's almost, I'm not in present um, time Los Angeles anymore or, you know, any country of the world. It's just, I always felt that all Hollywood is my home and uh, all the beautiful uh, properties that uh, I get to see and show to my clients, they speak to me as if I know them personally. Yes, and I get that. I always have some sort of a dialogue with these homes. They do share their stories with me. And I would definitely pick a home for myself that will be kind and gentle and bright and joyful. The home where, you know, I would want to sing and dance and uh, where I would want to take baths. You know, yeah, and where I would want to host my friends and laugh and read interesting books and uh, listen to beautiful music. And uh, the home will have large windows, you know, with sun shining through them. And uh, maybe it will be an old Spanish house. No, one of those haciendas. <laughs> I want to change my answer. I think I want to live in your dream house. <laughs> so, but you're right. It's like it's a contradiction because it's it, you're describing a place that is both joyful and exciting, and yet calm and centering at the same time. Right. Yeah. Right. It's almost like a peace 
uh, that is kind of like lost in time. Yes. And you can still go there. It is always part of you. Yes. And you are always part of it as well, you know, and just as I think that nothing ever goes away, you know, we are always where we are supposed to be and anything that is happening is part of who we are inside of us. And sometimes it takes time for it to manifest. Yeah, I just I can't tell you how much I appreciate this conversation because I'm here in New York City where um New York City real estate people are the most evil people on earth. Uh <laughs> like you know, just evil, just black-hearted evil, horrible people. And I'm having this conversation with you and you know, it's like you're making me very homesick for Hollywood because your whole approach is very holistic. It's very humanistic and uh it's the exact opposite of what we get here oh well thank you so much john for joining me for this interview it was just you know sharing experiences exploring uh hollywood present day and alt hollywood and um I really appreciate you being with me today. I'm so glad you're doing this. I mean, I I love what you do. And I love that you now have this uh, podcast because I can't wait to hear the stories of all these homes. I'm such an addict for old Hollywood. And I love these kind of stories. I mean, you're going a bit deeper than that, which I appreciate even more. So thank you. This is going to help me when I come back to LA and try to buy a nice house next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed experiencing the former Holy Chateau, our world-famous magic castle, and getting a unique feel of Hollywood through the eyes of John Fugelzang. Please press the like button and share your feedback for the podcast. Your time and support are always appreciated. John shared with us that Hollywood is a great walking town and that the history is what made him fall in love with it. He is even contemplating moving back to Los Angeles one day. I will keep my fingers crossed for that. He is still a California resident, even though he lives in New York, and his cat is from L.A. as well. John likes to take his son to the beach, the L.A. Zoo, the aquarium in Long Beach, Disneyland, and, of course, to watch movies at El Capitan, the Cinerama Dome, and the Chinese theaters. He also shared... An interesting story about Jean Autry riding a horse during the Hollywood Christmas Parade in the 40s and being completely ignored by the kids while they were yelling, Here comes Santa Claus, and that inspired him to write that song. John's ideal home is the one that speaks to his soul in the neighborhood that calls him. We are always where we are supposed to be. Anything that is happening to us is part of who we are on the inside. Next Friday, we are traveling to Brantwood and we will experience the home where Marilyn Monroe used to live. See you there. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood.